Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. And if it's the first time you're visiting my channel, I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, put up the thumbs up and you can share it and you can also subscribe. I discuss various topics um, that I hope are of common interest. And you can look at the description below to see the source of my inspiration. I also tend to put links um, about the source I get my information from. And usually it's, like I said, it's usually common interest. Well, today is quite a sad um, state of affairs today because another person has died in one of the detention centres. Harmonsworth has got a reputation, a very bad reputation of being quite sadistic. Um, it's, it's just not nice. I, it's almost like the people in there are treated like animals. They're tortured, apparently. They're abused. They're humiliated. And whereas detention is supposed to take 28 days, like in other um, countries like the EA, in the UK, they're kept in there indefinitely, sometimes up to 12 months, sometimes up to 18 months, in horrendous conditions. Sometimes they're on lockdown for 13 hours. It's worse than prison. Anyway, Oscar Okwarim, he's in his 30s, a Nigerian. Apparently, he was screaming for help. And all the um, inmates were screaming for him, calling the guard. Nobody came. And he died the following morning. So this happened, I think, on maybe Friday. And I think he was found dead on Saturday morning. Apparently they tried to resuscitate him, but it was too late. And the thing is, is that it's not the, um, you know, it ha keeps happening. Um, I don't know if you remember in June, a Polish guy, he hung himself because he couldn't stand being in detention any longer. He was in there for nine months. And it really is horrendous. I don't know if, how many of you saw the panorama where somebody went in undercover and saw how the guards treat the inmates. I mean, these people are not criminals. It's not like they've committed a crime. It's not like they've done a robbery or a murder. They've just overstayed. And yes, you can call that a crime in certain effects, but it's not a crime that deserves the kind of treatment that these people are getting. It's really, really atrocious. Anyway, um, another, another bit of sad news is that um, the Home Office, well, the court has ruled that three days is enough notice for deportees. Um, there was a, there is a charity um, called, is it Ministry of Justice? I think it's called Ministry of Justice. Let me see what it's called. It's a charity who's acting on behalf of detainees, medical justice. And they challenged it because they're saying that, you know, three days isn't enough time for um, detainees to get a lawyer but I think that's the whole point isn't it you throw them in there you don't really want them to get a lawyer you don't really want them to have justice you just want to deport them and if you deported them it wouldn't even be so bad but to keep them in there for months and months and months not knowing when they're going okay they get um, they get a three day to a seven day window to say that they will be leaving any time after three months and that's it they're forgotten about or if they're not forgotten about nothing happens they're just kept in there so they're told that they they'll be deported but then they're kept in there indefinitely and treated horrendously so um so medical justice there, there's nothing really more they can do um there is you know it is supposed they are supposed to have enough time to get a lawyer but like i said i'm not quite sure how many people can afford a lawyer i'm not quite sure how that goes i mean i understand they have access to a lawyer for one day in a court but i don't think there's anybody that literally goes in and sees them or speaks to them i'm sure with all these advocates we have that somebody should be going into those detention centers and making sure that people are being treated properly and assessing the state and the treatment 
look at this, look at the detainees, see if they've got any bruises, see if they've got any, see if they've got any cuts, see if they've got any broken legs. I mean, I hear they do all sorts of them in there. And there's nobody supervising them. It's a private enterprise. And, you know, it's just going unsupervised and it looks like nobody cares. I mean, I'm sure some of these MPs or, you know, like the likes of David Lammy and all of those should be going in there. Or even Trevor McDonald. Why doesn't he go in there and interview? You know what I mean? They say that, oh, you know, there's all these restrictions why people can't go in there. You can go in a prison. Why can't you go into a detention centre? Why don't they have, why aren't they allowed visitors? Why are they isolated? You know, I smell a rat again. Because, they, you know, when people are kept away from the public eye or from scrutiny like that, anything can happen to them. And you hear about one death or two death and then it all gets blown over. People forget about it and this is their family. And yet we have another man in his 30s. We don't even know how he died. But apparently he was screaming. And the whole of the cellmates were screaming. And they have intercoms in their cells. So they, the, the guards can't say they didn't hear them. But they were totally ignored. And apparently some of the um, cellmates, they've called ambulances when they're not... Um, feeling well or when they're really in pain and would you believe that the guards turn the ambulances back you know they they you know they've got such a skeptical mind they think everybody is pretending everybody is pretending to be sick in order to get out or in order to get a reprieve and then they're afraid to let them out because somebody might tell um, the public what they're doing it might leak out to the newspapers exactly what's going on in there so they don't want to get them out they prefer them to die in there than they go out and tell their story I wish somebody would go in there again undercover and and um, show them up for what they are okay um, in March 2019 the Home Office was asked to suspend the policy on removing immigrants without adequate warning. The controversial removal notice window was blocked by the was blocked by the High Court following a challenge by human rights group Medical Justice. It was the 72 hours to seven days notice that they faced being removed at some point during the ensuing three months without further warning. And that's that's the psychological psychological damage. You're told that you're within three days, no, within 72 hours and seven days or seven days, you're told within that window that you will be removed within three months or any time thereafter. It would be so much better if they said three months and they left in three months, but oh no. They have to torture them by letting them not know at what point after the three months they're going to be deported. So they're in there never knowing, day after day, being stuck in those horrendous conditions, not knowing when they're going to be deported. The court has now ruled that 72 days is adequate and is not a threat to the rule of law. But the thing is, it's not even the 72 days we should be worrying about. I don't even think we should be worrying about the notice that they're being given to get an attorney because the majority of them, sad to say, can't afford an attorney. What they should be working towards is getting them out within 28 days in line with other countries. That's what they should be working towards. Not having these people in there indefinitely so they can be cruelly treated and have sadists as guards. Because that's what it is. These people are sadists who are running these um, detention centres. And the thing is, is that, you know, there's probably people who mean well in, in those detention centres, but they can't even say anything. They can't whistle blow because they're probably scared. So it's like everybody's complicit in the cruelty. And we know it goes on. 
detainees have no have no access to court to challenge its decisions. The notice of deportation states a migrant will be deported at a future date, providing a minimum of three months for them to prepare. But many of them are in there for a year, 18 months, if they last that long. Home office policy gives migrants 72 hours, three days notice of deportation, and it's now deemed lawful. The medical justice challenged the removal when justice sorry the medical justice challenged the removal notice window, claiming it is impossible for people who are not ready who are not already who do not already have a lawyer to obtain one. Ah, so once and it, and the thing is it's not even so much as um if they can't afford a lawyer. If they can afford a lawyer, the, the advantage of that is that it puts the case on hold so they can't deport them while they have a lawyer, while that case is being, you know, progressed. But that's another reason why they don't want them to have a lawyer. It's fine for them to keep them in there indefinitely under their own rules, but if they have a lawyer, they don't like the idea that the lawyer is the one who's pulling the strings. Yeah, they're worse than prisons. I've said all of that. Hammondsworth, brutal detention centre near Heathrow Airport. Apparently he was screaming for help but was ignored and found dead the following morning. Apparently everyone was screaming to the guards for help but they were ignored. He was 30s, he's from Nigeria. His name is Oscar Okwarim. Ambulance have been turned away when detainees have asked for help. People are being left in there for months. Inmates are traumatised. It's just another form of enslavement. They can't castrate, lynch or draw and quarter them. So they do the next best thing. Assault them, humiliate them, traumatise them and then leave them to die. Um, <clears throat> Harmonsworth was meant to be for people scheduled for imminent removal. But... Um, it's not. They're in there for months. Eleven people have died in the detention centres. In June, it was a Polish man, only 28 years old, detained for nine months, took his life because he couldn't stand it anymore. Um, Harmonsworth is a Category B prison. Detainees are locked up for sometimes 13 hours a day and they're not even criminals. Apparently, um, when they realize, when they noticed that, that Oscar, the Nigerian man, had died, they said there's a gap in training. I mean, gap in training, I mean, please, common sense, compassion, maybe, empathy, maybe, a little bit, have a little heart, maybe. That's got nothing to do with training. Hearing someone screaming like that and ignoring it has got nothing to do with training. That is deliberate. That is deliberate torture. That is. So I don't know where they're going with, oh, there's gaps in training. There's no gaps in training. It's just an evil system. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.